introducing the Daredevils of Hollywood. All right, everybody. A man's life depends on your teamwork. Now on your toes. Well, well, hello, Raymond. Oh, hello. Hey, we're about ready for your scene. Uh, what's it all about? Well, you're driving that car over there, and as you approach the drawbridge, it starts to go up. Oh, very interesting. And then what happens? Well, you're climbing along about 70 miles an hour, mm -hmm. so you break through the stop gates and go right on out onto the bridge. Oh, gets more interesting all along. Go ahead. This bridge, you see, it uh, parts in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, when you get to the opening, you just sail on across. Oh, I see. Uh, how wide will the opening be when I get there? It'll be about 15 feet. Well, that's okay with me. I'll stand by for your signal. All right, everybody. Here we go. Everybody quiet. This is a picture. Okay. Give him the signal, George. Camera. Hey, look at that guy. <laughs> is he kicking that bus along? You're not kidding. There goes the bridge. Now watch this for camera. Here's your shot, Mr. Holt. I hope he makes it. From Hollywood, the motion picture capital of the world, we bring you the thrilling true life experiences of those men behind the scenes. Those daring unsung heroes whose breathtaking adventures on the screen have thrilled millions whose daily jobs bring them face to face with death. Those men who comprise the strangest fraternity on earth, the Suicide Squad, the movie stuntmen, the Daredevils of Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, in bringing you this copyrighted radio feature, we are privileged to have as our guest one of the top-notch stuntmen of Hollywood, Mr. Kansas Mowring. It is through his cooperation that we are able to reenact some of the highlights of his dangerous profession. And the thrilling scenes you are about to hear are, of course, his own actual experiences. Mr. Mooring is here in the studio right now, and later in the program, we will bring him to the microphone. But first, let us show you an average day in this daredevil stuntman's life. It is late at night on January 16th, 1926. On a special passenger train standing on a sidetrack some 15 miles from Las Vegas, Nevada, a motion picture company has just finished their evening meal. Some are preparing to retire to their compartments. Others stroll along the tracks outside for a breath of fresh air. Several card games are in progress. And again, we find groups gathering for casual conversation. In one compartment are seated the director of the picture, Edward Sedgwick, his assistant, and Kansas Mooring. They're going over their plans for the following day. What's the schedule for tomorrow, Mr. Sedgwick? Well, we've got to take that scene of the runaway train. You know, with Kansas here. Is that the one where I'm to climb along the top of the coaches and get to the engine and stop it? Yes, that's the one. Only you're not supposed to get to the engine. The script calls for a man to ride up alongside the cab on a motorcycle. He gets into the engine and stops the train. Where do I fit into the scene? Well, you're doubling for the fellow who plays the conductor. You notice that the train is not slowing up as usual for the turn. So you know there's something wrong. Yes, we already have those interior scenes of the conductor. And that's right. All we've got to get now is Kansas climbing up on top of the train and making his way toward the engine. That would be a running shot, won't it, Miss Sedgwick? Mm-hmm, that's right. We'll have two cameras set up there, just behind the engine, shooting back. And how fast will the train be going? Well, it's got to be wide open. I should say about 70. Say, that's going to make quite a stiff breeze up there. With a the train rocking and swaying around those curves, and that rounded roof, sounds a little tough. Well, it's not going to be very easy, Kansas, I'll tell you that. Well, that's no novelty. I've never seen one of these train gags yet that was easy. <laughs> Next morning, bright and early, we find the crew up and working. A platform just behind the engine is being completed on which will rest the cameras. A survey of the track ahead is being made. Kansas Mooring has just finished an inspection of the car roofs over which he is to go. And now we find him talking with the director. What time have you, Mr. Sedgwick? Just 7.30. We ought to be shooting this any minute now. They've just about got that platform finished. Yep, and when we get those cameras set up, we'll be ready. Now, let's see. I'm to make my way along the top of the cars to about the third coach from the engine. Is that right? That's it, Kansas. And that is where the other stuntman gets on from his motorcycle. That'll be about a mile down the track? Yes, just about. So you'd better start crawling up on top when we pass that bridge down there. That'll give you plenty of time. I don't think I'm going to be able to walk very well up there. There's no place for good footing. And the wind will be pretty strong, too. Well, just crawl along on your hands and knees. Uh, take it easy. We'll have plenty of time. Well, I'll stand up and walk, if it's possible. Now, look, Kansas... Just to make the shot look good, 
I'd like you to pretend to slip once or twice. You know, grab one of those metal ventilators and hold on. It'll be a nice little thrill. If this thing works out as I think it will, I won't have to do much pretending. Cameras are all set, Mr. Sedgwick. Anytime you're ready. Good. Well, let's get this shot, Kansas. Right. I'll watch you for the flag signal. Okay, Monty. Let's get up there on the platform. All right. I'm right behind you. Uh, well, here we are. Well, I guess we're ready. Let's go. <laughs> I don't say he isn't, but that's swell. I want this fast. There's the bridge. Yes. Now give Kansas the signal flag to come on. Okay, boys. Camera. This rattler's running away all right. We must be making 65 at least. Now there's Kansas. Climbing on top of the coach down there. Hey, he's having a tough time. That wind's about to blow him off. Yeah, he can't stand up. Hey, here we go into a pretty sharp curve. Well, look. Look, Kansas slipped and fell. He's holding toward the edge. Great grief. He's about to fall off. Look. He grabbed one of those ventilators. Yes, and it's pulling out. It's too weak to hold him. He's hanging over the side. Great Scott, I hope that ventilator holds. Half of it's pulled out already. He's falling back up. Yep, he made it all right. Oh, boy, that was close. He's coming on down the train. He's going to jump out of the next car. That's all he can do to fight that wind. Here he comes. A perfect jump. Man, what a shot. And here comes the man on the motorcycle. Getting ready to make the transfer onto the train. Yeah, but look at Kansas. He's crawling on his hands and knees. Oh, here's another one of those curves. Look at that. He almost fell off again. He grabbed another ventilator and it's pulling out. Well, he can't have that luck twice in a row. Swing your cameras down and pick up the motorcycle transfer, boys. Come on, Marty. Let's get down there and pull Kansas out of that spot. Come on, let's well, I hope that ventilator will hang out for a few more seconds. Come on, here. He's hanging on over the side. Come on, he's holding on. I guess they completed the transfer. The train's stopping. Yeah, come on, come on. Here, here we are. Give me your hand, Kansas. That's it. Okay, Mr. Here Patrick. Yes. Let's pull together. All right. Let's just stop now. Uh, oh, boy. Say, you had a narrow escape there. How do you feel? You were just in time, Mr. Sedgwick. I couldn't have lasted another ten seconds. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our pleasure to present the daring stuntman who made that scene and in so doing came near to losing his life, whose job it is to make such scenes for motion pictures. Kansas Mooring, interviewed by Hal Stiles. Well, Kansas, I'll bet you were glad to get out of that spot. Glad is right. And what would have happened if you'd let go or if the ventilator had broken completely off? Well, I just wouldn't be here now if that had happened. Say, Kansas, how many stunts do you suppose you've done for pictures? Well, that's a tough one. Let's see, 19 years in the business and three or four stunts a week. Well, you figured it out. Well, I'm not very good at mathematics either, but tell me, have you ever been hurt? Oh, just banged up now and then. I've never been seriously hurt. Well, that is really remarkable. Now, tell me, what type of stunts have you done mostly? Well, I guess I've done more horse stuff than anything else. I remember one stunt that was plenty tough. I was supposed to dive a horse over a cliff into an immense tank of water. It was back in about 1923 at Universal. Bill Kraft, the director, was in an awful hurry. He was... Uh, just a minute, Kansas. Uh, we're anxious, very anxious to hear about that, but first, let's have a word from our sponsor. Okay, Kansas, now, what about that horse stunt? Well, it was on the lot at Universal Studios, and I was doubling for Hoot Gibson. They had a big chute rigged up with a trap door in it that made a slide. That slide had axle grease on it. The whole thing was about 65 feet above the water. I was on a horse up there, and they were ready to take the shot. All right, everybody. I'm going to take this scene. You all set, Kansas? Yeah, I'm ready. You got those fire hoses from the bottom of the tank, haven't you, Bill? You know, to make the water look rough. Yes, sir. All set. All right, turn them on. Okay, here we go. That must have been tough. What finally happened? Well, they came out and picked me up, and the horse swam out afterwards. I was just about all in. Well, were you unconscious? 
No, not quite. But I was fighting to keep from passing out, I'll tell you. The horse had pawed me in the face and the chest, and I was hurting pretty badly. But they did get the scene all right. Oh, yes. The director was very well pleased. Well, that's fine. Now, Kansas, what is the main reason that you're in the stunt business? There's only one reason. That's money. Well, that's a very good reason. But, uh, look, just what are your plans for the future? Well, frankly, I have no plans. I just keep on doing what I'm doing. That's good enough for me. Well, I guess that's just about the right attitude to take at that. Then I take it that you like this stunt business. Yes, I get quite a bang out of it. You never know what they'll have you doing next. Well, there's an old saying, you know, nothing like variety. Yes, that's right. Every stunt is different. And by the same token, I suppose everyone has its particular appeal. Well, you, we've certainly enjoyed your stories, Kansas, and on behalf of our listeners, I want to thank you very sincerely for coming here. I know that everyone joins me in hoping that we may have you on this program again very soon. And so, in the meantime, good luck. Goodbye. <laughs> ¶¶